Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I'm Wave Theory, and I'm back with a little bit different format of video today because there's something important that I want to talk to you about. And that is an issue that I have discovered with these two Hi Fi Men headphones. That is the HER9, which I have reviewed and will post a link in the description uh, below so that you can watch that review if you want. And then I also have their Hi Fi Men Deva Pro on hand uh, for evaluation and a review. Now, I mostly noticed this issue, or the issue is the most prevalent with the Deva Pro, which is interesting. It is in present on the R9, but I didn't notice it as much before I pushed that R9 review out. But now that I know that it's here, I need to say something about it just in case it happens to you. All right. The issue stems from the fact that both of these headphones are compatible with the Blue Mini R2R dongle. And then also you can plug them into just about any headphone amp that you want that has a single-ended output if you use the included stock cable, which has the dual 3.5 millimeter TRS connectors on the headphone end. You get an identical stock cable with both of these headphones. So I only have the one here <clears throat> to show as an example. All right. So after watching the video that I just made, I realized it didn't actually say what the problem is on these things. And this happens on both the Deva Pro and the ATR9, is that when you plug in like any of these aftermarket cables that I have here, I have a heart, I have that plus sound, I have a plus sound X8 here, and this is a uh, grave digger or a corpse cable grave digger right here. Any of these, you plug into the Deva Pro and the R9, and what happens is the the right side either cuts out completely, you don't hear any sound from it, or it's just very, very quiet with lots of popping and crackling. Okay, um, If you just use like the, the headphone output of a laptop, for example, you're just not going to hear really anything. Maybe just a little bit of static from the right side, everything is going to come out the left side. If you plug into a more powerful headphone amp like uh, my Vioelectric HP V281, for example, okay, like that powers both of them, but there's a strong left bias channel imbalance, okay, and uh, a lot of popping and crackling and distortion in the right side. So that's sonically the issue that we're trying to avoid here. Okay, back to the rest of the video. The issue that I noticed was that if you use an aftermarket cable, and another reason why I need to make this video is because I have been highly critical of hi fi and stock cabling, saying that they inject a treble peak, and they do. This is the same cable that is used in the Edition XS and in the uh, HE400 SE, and on those two headphones, you definitely don't want to use the stock cable because it will give you a whole lot more treble energy and a very sharp treble peak. However, you do want to use the stock cable on these if you're gonna plug into an external amp. And the reason for the difference is because they wanted to have compatibility both with wired connections and wireless connections uh, from their Bluetooth dongle here. Okay, the long and the short of it, if you just want to just skip over, get the bottom line here on what you can and can't do and move on with your life is just what I said. If you want to use a wired connection to a single-ended amplifier, make sure you use the stock cable. That's the guarantee safe thing to do. If you want to use a wired connection to a balanced headphone amplifier, then you need to get a cable that's like this. Okay, here's one that has a 4.4 millimeter Pentacon on the amp end and a 3.5 millimeter TRRS on the headphone end. This is also safe to use and I have no problem uh, with either headphone that way. The issue stems from anytime you want to use an aftermarket cable. I shouldn't say anytime, but the vast majority of the time you might run into an issue. Here's a heart cable. Observe that it's a they use 3.5 millimeter TS connections on the headphone end. That's where the problem stems from, mostly. But there are other aftermarket cables out there, such as this Plus Sound X8, which is single-ended 3.5 millimeter on the amp end, but then dual 3.5 millimeter TRS on the headphone end. Okay, this 
also creates a problem because of the way it is wired. The long and the short of it here is the high Feynman stop cable, which is now a knot. Sorry about that, but here we go. Is wired differently. Okay, like if you want the, the quick thing here, the reason that this works and this does not is because the Hi Feynman wired this positive, empty, negative. Whereas plus sound and just about any other 3.5 millimeter TRS cable like this that I found, okay, like this cheap one from Amazon, for example, and most others that I know of are gonna go positive and then put these two together for a negative so that this kind of connector mimics what this kind of connector does. Okay, all right, here's the thing. So that's the, that's the, again, you can use this with these headphones, you can use the stock cable with these headphones, if you want to use an aftermarket cable, the safest bet is to get one that has this kind of plug on the headphone end, okay? And I will put a link in the description to this cable, as well as for a matching adapter, which I have somewhere in my pile of stuff over here. Here it is. As well as an adapter that you can take that from balance to single-ended if you want and use it safely, no problem. Link in the description to those things, okay. I don't think Hi Feynman warns you about this sufficiently. We're going to cut in just a moment to a quick clip where I show you the, the pages in the owner's manuals of these two things where it talks about the cabling, and I think it is less than clear. And also, I think the problem exists on their website because I just have not seen really ex clear, explicit instructions on what kind of cabling you can use. And I think that is important, particularly because Hi-Fi Men has been one of the easiest headphone brands to use after cable mark aftermarket cables with, right? Like we're used to this. Their Edition XS, for example, okay, also dual 3.5 millimeter input. You can use pretty much any dual 3.5 millimeter cable you want to aftermarket cable. You can use the heart that I just showed you. You can use the plus sound that I just showed you. It doesn't really matter, okay? Same thing with their HE6 SE V2. Dual 3.5 millimeter input. You can use just about any cable that physically fits it, okay? Their HE1000 V2, this is the older version that has 2.5 millimeter connectors on it, okay? But the newer ones have 3.5 millimeters connect, millimeter connectors on it. And same deal, right? You can use just about any aftermarket cable on them you want not with these, okay? These are different because they went for the compatibility with the blue mini thing, but they are not clear about it. So let's look at those uh, owner's manual pages. And then if you wanna nerd out on it, I will go into the details about why this is, which might be helpful just for your own knowledge and entertainment, maybe, but also if you want to wire your own custom aftermarket cable, you're gonna to wanna to know how. So I will talk about that too. So let's look at that clip and then we'll come back and talk about what's going on here. I have photographed the relevant pages from the owner's manuals of both the Deva Pro and the R9 so that we can look at how Hi Feynman talks about this cabling thing. I think they need to be clearer. Here is the page from the Deva Pro. I wanna highlight a few things here. First, let's just zoom in on the text. The Deva Pro includes a user replaceable 3.5 millimeter cable designed for Deva Pro only. Guarantee the maximum extraction of audio quality. It's high sensitivity means it will bring out the best from almost any source, including laptops, digital audio player, and mobile phones. All right, now it's, we have to remember, Hi Fi Min is a Chinese company and they are likely translating this from Chinese into English. So there's going to be some hiccups in there, maybe some lack of clarity. But on this issue, I think clarity is really important. Here's the thing What does universal acceptance mean to you? When you think about cabling and headphones, what do you think of? It made me think that you can use almost any cable that you want. And particularly in the context of hi fi Men headphones, which, is, which have always been really good about accepting a wide range 
of aftermarket cables. All right, now here's the thing. They say the Deva, Pro, the Deva Pro includes a user replaceable 3.5 millimeter cable. They also say it's designed for the Deva Pro only. All right, so we have kind of a mixed message there. All right, guarantee the maximum extraction of audio quality and so forth. So they are not explicitly saying that you can use an aftermarket cable. They are not explicitly saying that you can't use an aftermarket cable. Here's the R9. The HE R9 socket can accommodate both dual-sided unbalanced 3.5 millimeter cable and a single-sided 3.5 millimeter balanced cable at the same time. First of all, it cannot accommodate those at the same time. You can have one plugged in or the other plugged in, not both. Okay, so that is weird. Also, if you look on the left, the lower, the on the left page, the lower right image, that doesn't appear anywhere in the product packaging. Okay, not sure why that's there. All right. But coming back to this, the, the language of accommodates both dual-sided unbalanced 3.5 millimeter cable, that's the stock cable. That's what they're talking about there. And a single-sided 3.5 millimeter balanced cable, which they don't show, okay, at the same time. So again, it's not super clear that you can roll cables, use aftermarket cables, and it's also not super clear that you can't. All right. There's also no discussion on the outside of the box or the packaging or like combing through their website. I didn't see any like clear indication that you have to be careful with cabling. I think they need to do a better job of communicating this. All right, let's dive into more of what kind of cables you can use and why. Okay, back to this view. All right, so we talked about that. Let's talk about what kinds of cables and, and like what's going on here, like why this doesn't work. All right, here is the circuit board of my Project Ember headphone amp from Garage 1217. I just did a review of this, but the reason I want to show you this is I want you to look at the jack here. This is where the headphone plugs in, okay, right here. And notice that we have one, two, three points in there of electrical contact, and it's made to accommodate a plug that looks like this, which has one, two, three electrical contacts. All right. This kind of connector right here is called a TRS, tip ring sleeve, All right? And the way this is wired for a pair of stereo headphones is typically we have left positive, right positive, and then both left and right negative are wired to the sleeve right here. And then the speaker driver just knows which is which by looking at the voltage in the signal that's on here. We don't need to go into the details of that, but it knows what it's doing, it knows what it's doing. Okay. A cable or a connector that looks like this, such as on the mini dongle here. What we're gonna have here is I think, pretty sure this is the case, is it goes left positive, left negative, right positive, right negative. Okay, this is a TRRS connector, which means that to fit something with four electrical contacts in there into a jack, you would need a jack that on the inside has four electrical contacts, which is why this one won't work. Inside these two headphones, okay, the Deva Pro and the R9, on the side that accepts the TRRS jack or plug is a jack that has four electrical contacts to match this. Now here's the issue. If you try to plug a connector uh, that looks like this, just a TS tip sleeve, right here, you plug this into a jack that is designed to accommodate this, and what you're gonna do is you're going to electrically connect these two guys, actually these three, one, two, three, together on this sleeve right here. Just physically, you're gonna wire them together, and you're going to create a short. Now what that's going to sound like when you plug that into a headphone like this is turns out the left side gets the signal 
the right side is either almost completely cut out, you don't hear anything, or the right side is just quieter than the left side, so you have a strong left bias channel imbalance. And what does come through on the right side is often heavily distorted with lots of popping and crackling and that sort of thing. Okay, so that's bad. And that's because, again, you plug this kind of connector into a jack that is designed to take this and you are connecting electrically, boom, 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 those three things together. Bad news, don't wanna do that. Okay, now the reason that the plus sound, the nice expensive plus sound cable doesn't work in the Deva Pro or the R9 is because the way they have done the wiring in here is they have put this and these two together. So it's a similar effect. You are still giving an electrical contact that shorts out, I hope this shows up well, that shorts out here because you are putting together these three again, right? And shorting things out. Now the way hi Feynman avoided that with their stock cable, is they didn't connect the ring to anything. Not connected to anything, okay? So you get positive here, negative here, nothing in the middle. There's a physical space in there so that when you plug this in, okay, to a jack designed to accommodate this, okay, on either side, you are only getting this tip and this sleeve active, nothing else in the middle. Okay, so this, because they have cut out that ring, is not shorting anything out. All right, so that means if you ever want to make your own aftermarket cable using dual 3.5 connectors, first get TRS, you need to do it, and then make sure that you do plus, minus, plus, minus, and then don't wire the ring to anything. Leave it open, leave it empty. Then you should be good. Okay, or just use a single-sided connection like this one where you have the TRRS, okay, on just the left side going in there, okay? Avoid. Ah. So many cables, complete amateur hour here, okay? It's like moving spaghetti around. Avoid this. Just don't use TS, okay, on the headphone end. You do that, you should be good. Hi, Feynman. Please make more explicit somewhere, either in your owner's manual, on the box, on your website, somewhere that the Deva Pro the R9, and I would be 99.9% .9 confident that the Ananda wireless and the R10D are the same thing, okay? Um, be very explicit that you can really only use the stock cables or the Bluetooth dongle and not use aftermarket cables. And yes, hi fi man, I think you have a responsibility to be clearer about that because so many of your other headphones. So many of your other headphones. And this is just a few of them, okay? Can use just about any aftermarket cable with 3.5 millimeter connectors that you want. Okay, all right, that's it. I am Wave Theory. I hope that this was helpful and informative and that hopefully you can avoid a scare and potentially popping a driver or burning up an amp or something like that um, by using the appropriate cables on the Deva Pro and the R9. Okay, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. I am Wave Theory. Enjoy the music.